Hi ladies and gentlemen, this is Mabula Haverkamp again uh, from the AstroPixel Processor Office. Uh, I present you now the new release notes of the new version 2.00 Beta 36. Uh, of course, as always, some bug fixes. Uh, we have updated several menus. We have improved the layout of several of the menus. Uh, but most importantly, this new version has quite a big upgrade in the registration engine. We have improved the pattern recognition between the stars. Uh, and so this means that the registration engine is quite a bit more robust now, especially for mosaics with little stars in the overlap areas. How this looks? In AstroPixel Processor, I'll show you a quick demonstration before we dive into the summary of the release notes. Of course, to improve the registration engine, we had to change some code. We had to make it a bit smarter. So I thought it would be nice to give you a peek into our development environment. Uh, and this peek will also show you how we are working on the upcoming manual that we will release. This will be a full manual. It will be available on the website in HTML. Uh, it will also be available in PDF, so you can print it, print it out and put it on your desk. Uh, and this manual, it will be released alongside the 2.0 stable release. does registration of images actually work? How are the images aligned to each other so the stars fit perfectly? To illustrate this, I have made a little sketch which I hope will explain how this works technically and it 
could also tell you how we are able to further improve this. Registration is based on pattern recognition between the reference frame and the frame to align. In this case, we use triangle patterns or triangle descriptors. Um, you see on the left side three triangles, a blue one, a green one, and a blue-green one. You will also see these triangles in the frame to register. Now, the image can be successfully registered if the patterns that we see in the reference frame can be identified in the frame to align within a certain error margin. Uh, and the error margin is needed because of several factors. Uh, the frame to align, it will be shifted, it will be rotated, uh, relative to the reference frame, as you can see here. The triangles don't exactly look the same, right? Uh, also, the optics can be distorted. The optics are never perfect, and this can create distortions in the, the field of view, which cause stars to be slightly at a, a position, at a slightly different position because of this. Now, um, you can also use quads and pentagons to identify patterns. The less stars you have, uh, the more you want to use triangles. If you have thousands of stars, yeah, you can simply use pentagons because that will be faster and more robust. But with little stars in the overlap areas between images, yeah, you will want to use triangles because then you have more chance of success. Uh, now, in this case, you can see the stars are matched, and so the image is successfully registered. In the, this up version, we have made the improvement that these patterns now are also looked for in non-square areas. Previously, we were only using square areas on different scales, meaning uh, an area as large as the image and smaller areas. Now we also use uh, elongated areas. Uh, and this means that these patterns can more easily be identified in the mosaic overlap areas. Uh, and our testing really confirms this on several mosaics, that the mosaic registration has become quite a bit more robust. Hope this explains it a bit. If you have any question about it, feel free to uh, post it below this video uh, or post questions on our forum on our website. Now, the next uh, part of the release notes, I will show uh, as shown on our forum in the topic for the release notes. Uh, first, we see the one for the registration. Uh, you can see some examples there. This is really impressive one, very big uh, mosaic. We were never able before to be get this registered. Now it works. Uh, this is a very difficult one because of very strong optical distortion. Now, in this new version, we have updated some menus uh, because it was hard to see them properly on screens of low resolutions or desktop scaling. The license uh, and settings menu has been changed so it can be seen properly on low resolution monitors. The same for the license management. The license management menu has uh, been updated as well in general, so it looks a bit differently now. Uh, we have also improved the menu in the registration engine that asks for your focal length and the pixel size. Uh, and now, uh, if the registration fails or you want to re-register, 
the values that you put in they will be remembered so you don't have to put them in again and again this should uh, make it a bit more easy uh, furthermore uh, on some computers uh, people use uh, desktop scaling factors different factors this had a little influence on how the menus looked so as you can see here the integrate menu looked too wide uh, with a certain desktop scaling this is now fixed it should look properly now with different desktop scalings and this version has fixed several bugs that were reported or were encountered by ourselves there was a problem with the crop composition selector uh, causing a weird problem with downscaling with a factor of zero. The image would become unlimited otherwise. This, this was a really bad bug. It has been fixed. Uh, and then there were several other bugs. You can read it on the forum uh, if you're interested in those. One thing to point out is one user uh, had an error, a class cast exception in the calibration engine because it loaded 64 bits calibration masters created by a different application and Astro Pixel Processor would error on it. This error is gone. App can process now your data with 64 bits masters. So it's not a problem anymore. Uh, we do want to point out that uh, the data calibration using 64 bits masters is really only adding to fill up your hard disk faster. It, it does not improve your calibration, uh, so it adds nothing. Uh, anyway, if you have 64 bits masters, you can use them now in app, it will work properly. That's it for all the release notes for Beta 36. Thank you all for watching and hope to see you next time. Please like and subscribe the video uh, if you enjoy this and want to see more.